here we are to these switch examples. And I think once you see these examples, you'll realize how much easier this is than doing some of the more complicated if statements, um, depending on the situation that you're you know, trying to do in the code. So in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to write a script that lets the user input a length and a unit. And then we're going to convert that length over to centimeters. All right. So the user is going to put in a value that represents the length, and then they're going to put in the unit. And the possible units that they can use would be meters, millimeters, and inches. So if they put in any other unit, so let's say they tried to put in feet, we're going to display an error message that that is not an acceptable unit. All right, so that's what we're going to do. And obviously, depending on the unit that they put in, you're going to have different conversion equations. So that's going to give us multiple different paths in our code. All right, and we're going to use the switch method to develop those paths. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is ask the user to put in the length. We'll just do that with an input statement. So we'll tell them to enter the length. We want to convert to centimeters. All right. So they'll enter a length, that should be the numeric one. And then next we're gonna tell them to enter the units. And I'm just gonna call that unit. So we're gonna say enter the units. And remember, it's always a good idea to put the options that the user has. That way they kinda know what the choices are. Now this one, they're entering units, so they're gonna enter a string. Right, so they're either going to enter M or millimeters or inches, okay, or M is for meters. So we have to put this S in the quotes here at the end. So don't forget that part. It's going to be important. Otherwise, it won't work. So let's put a semicolon there. And now let's do the switch part. Okay, so we're going to do switch. Now the next part, you have to figure out what variable you want to test against. So for us, what determines our conversion equation is going to be the unit, right? Not the length. We don't care about the length. That's just the value. We care about the unit. So we're going to do a switch on the variable unit, okay? Notice MATLAB indents for you. That way it makes it easier to follow. And then you're going to do case. And the first possible one we could have is meters, All right. So we'll have the lowercase m in the single quotes. All right, so if the user inputs meters, unit would equal meter. So then if meter is the same as this one, we're gonna do this next calculation. So y would equal length times 100. And then let's do f for now, just so everything looks nice. So we'll have percent dot to f meters converted to centimeters is percent dot two F. Oops. And then we can close that. You might want to put a slash in in here if you want. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. So let's do a slash in. And then we want to have comma. We have two variables that we need to put in here. So this first one's going to be the length. And then this one here would be y. And then close that parentheses. Okay, so that takes care of our first path. So if they input it in meters, we're going to do those two actions. Okay, if they don't do meters, then let's go to our next option. So next, if it's not meters, MATLAB will go through and it'll do a check and see if unit is equal to millimeters. All right. So if those two are the same, then it's going to do the next set of actions. So it'll say y is length divided by 10. Let's go ahead and put a semicolon. And then we can do the f print f. So this, I'm just going to copy and paste. And then we'll just make the change to make it what we need it to be. All right, so here, this would be millimeters. So that's all you need to change is this part right here. Okay. So now we need our next option. So next one would be inches. All right. 
And again, we're only going to get down into these other cases down here if we haven't, you know, had a match previously. So if the unit is equal to meters, we're going to do this, and then we're going to skip all of this stuff below. Okay. So kind of the same thing we had in the if statements. So if they put in inches, our conversion is going to be 2.54 times length. And then we need our F printf. So I'm just going to copy and paste again. And then I'm going to switch this to inches. All right. And then we got that. Now, let's say that they put in feet, right? They put in feet, they put in miles, they put in something that we didn't give as an option here. So we need something to take care of that. And what we're going to use is this otherwise, right? So we're going to have the three cases, three cases here. If none of these work out, if there's not a match with any one of these, then we reach the otherwise statement. And then this next action will be what happens if they didn't enter any of the acceptable units. So we just want to display a message that's going to say units are not known, try again, so they know that they put in the wrong unit. And I don't know why that's not indented, but yeah. Okay, and then we need to end. All right, so that's how it's going to work. So let's go through and then run these this a couple times and we'll put in different units to see what happens. All right, so here's my first prompt. So it's telling me to enter the length I want to convert to centimeters. So let's just do 10. And for the first one, let's just do meters. Okay. So now notice it tells us 10 meters converted to centimeters is 1,000. All right. So we've got that, and so obviously we know it went through the right code, right? Because we entered meters, and that's what our fprintf shows right here. So next, let's run it again, and then we'll put in one of the other options. So let's just do 10 again. This time, let's do millimeters. So now it tells us 10 millimeters converted to centimeters is 1. So that means we went into this code, right? So we got into this case statement. So MATLAB went through, it got the, the string for unit from the user, and then it tested unit against these case options. So this one here, meters was not a match, so it skipped all this, went down to this next one. Millimeters was a match, so then it did these two action statements. Okay, so let's do it one more time. Actually, we're gonna do it two more times. So let's put 10 again, and this time let's put inches. So I end. So here, 10 inches converted over to centimeters is 25.4. So that one went in the right block of code because the print statement gave us inches right here. And then finally, let's do 10. But this time, let's put in feet. Okay, so feet is not a valid option. So it's going to tell you units are not known. You need to try again. And it did that because unit was compared against all three of these strings. And none of them were a match, so then it reaches otherwise, and then it does this. Okay? And this example used strings. You don't have to use strings, obviously, for your case statements. You can use numbers. Okay? So if for some reason I was doing an example that just needed length, I could put values in here for case, and it would compare the value of length to the value in these case statements. All right, and we'll do that in the next example. So number eight, this one is going to be one we're gonna generate a random integer from zero to nine, and we're gonna use the switch method to determine if that number is even, odd, or zero. Okay, so first let's generate our number, so we're going to do rand i, 0 to 9. So I'm going to leave the semicolon off so I can see the actual number. And now let's do switch. So the variable we want to check against 
or test against is D because that's what I called my random number. And under that, we'll have our first case statement. Now for this, we have several different options because we're testing to see if we have even, odd, or zero. So even numbers, we're going from zero to nine. We're gonna say our even numbers would be two, four, six, and eight. All right, so there's four possible choices. So I don't wanna do a case statement for each one of those even numbers. So I wanna do one case statement for all of them. And the way we do that is we use the braces, right? So the curly braces, and then we're gonna list the numbers separated with commas inside of those braces. So MATLAB then will test D against all four of those numbers. And if any of them are a match, it will do the action statements in this section. So here it would just display even number. Okay. And then the next option would be the odd numbers. So we'll say that's one, three, five, seven, and nine. So MATLAB will go through and it will test D against all five of these numbers. And if any of them are a match, it's going to display the statement odd number. Okay. And then finally, if none of these are a match, then that means we're gonna hit the otherwise statement and here we'd want to display the statement oops, zero, right? Because that means we have the number zero. So then let's end. So this is how you do it if you have multiple values for each uh, case that you need to test against. You just use the curly braces, separate with commas. So really easy to do. So let's run this, see what we get. And when you guys run it, you'll get a different number probably. So I got D is four, so it tells me that's an even number. So D was four, MATLAB knows to test D because we have it right here after switch. So basically it's seeing if four is in this set of numbers, which it is, so then it displays even number. All right, so let's run it again and see if we get a different. So this time we got three. All right, so three, that's an odd number. So this time D was three, so MATLAB is testing against the value three. So it comes through here, none of these are three, so that's not a match. So it skips this action statement, comes to the next case statement, and then here it matches with this three. So MATLAB knows to display this statement. All right. And then I'm gonna go ahead, let's just hard code in D equals zero, just so you can see what it does. So now D is equal to zero, so it should display this section right here which says zero. So let's run that and there you go. All right. So it didn't find a match in either of these case statements, so it jumps down here and displays zero. All right. So we're gonna see some more switch examples in the next section. We're gonna add something to it, and then we'll have a few more examples of switch. I'll see y'all then.